Well, hello, YouTube, and welcome back to the all-new Channel 2012. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to look at here today. I'm going to be showing you the Open ELEC XBMC setup here on this old Pentium 4 computer. And we're also going to be taking a look at the challenges associated with hooking it up to the CRT rear projection television set and controlling it remotely from the formerly activation-locked iPhone 4. This is going to be a longer video. I opted to do that instead of splitting it into smaller stub videos. So if there's any one of those topics that interests you more than the other two, you can feel free to use the time codes in the video description to skip around to those at your leisure. If you've viewed the channel for any length of time, this computer probably looks familiar to you because it was previously featured in the running Windows 8 on an old Pentium 4 computer video. Now, as you can see, I'm obviously no longer running Windows 8 on it or on any of my computers that are currently in active circulation for that matter. But back to this machine. The last time this was featured on the channel, it was, we'll say, less richly equipped. You may recall that I got this case for free on Craigslist and the motherboard on eBay for $30. However, the case was missing two optical drives as well as the cover or floppy drive that's supposed to go in the floppy drive bay. The end result was giant gaping holes in the front of the computer. So to make this more presentable, I figured it would be best to populate those bays with at least something. Now, because I was unable to find blank covers for any of these bays, I discovered that my only options were to either leave them wide open or to put some drives in them. Now, I did have some old spare CD and floppy drives hanging around, but they were most all beige except for this one. So I went the cheap route here and took the face plates off, brought them into the garage, and spray painted them black. And I don't think the result turned out all that bad. I also populated some of the slots in the back of the machine as well and upgraded the video card to a slightly better one that I found laying around the house. One that didn't have a noisy fan on it or a fan at all for that matter. The end result is this, a 2.8 GHz Pentium 4 on a socket 775 motherboard, 2 GB of DDR1 RAM if I remember correctly, an old 120 GB PETA or IED hard drive, and a second 80 gigabyte PADA eyed hard drive just for the heck of it. None of the CD DVD drives at the top are plugged in because I'm pretty sure none of them work. The floppy drive is actually plugged in but it's disabled because you can't fit a whole lot of multimedia on a floppy disk. All of the USB ports have been fixed and I have hooked up a USB remote receiver to the computer and as I mentioned earlier it is running the Open ELEC operating system. And for those of you not familiar, it's actually pretty interesting. It's basically Linux distribution whose sole purpose is to run XBMC. So there's very minimal overhead. It starts very quickly. It's perfect for this type of application and the only problems that I've had with it are video card compatibility issues as far as the component video out on the Radeon is concerned but I'll cover that a little bit better in the second part of the video. And at this time we will go ahead and power it up. Now at this point we'll see a few anomalies of side effects of setting this up on a CRT rear projection television set. The first of which is that it doesn't support some resolutions so even though I have managed to force it to 1080i which is the only HD resolution it supports for when XBMC starts there is a brief time when it's booting up where its resolution goes to a scan rate that the television doesn't support, which is why you see those artifacts when it first starts up. But as you can see here, it's now started and is working very well. If I go to the info page here, you can see a lot of the running statistics on the system. You can see stuff like runtime, resolution, memory, 
processor utilization, you can see storage information, all sorts of good stuff. Now one thing you might have noticed is that the theme here looks a little bit different from the XBMC default theme. And that is because I've run it through the XBMC Fusion Transformation Wizard. And basically that does a lot of cool stuff to the XBMC installation and sets you up with all sorts of good add-ons. The first and foremost of which is down here on the bottom of the screen. That's the Genesis add-on. There's all sorts of good stuff in here. But this is basically the place to stream television and movies. What it is is basically a service that searches all the best streaming sites, including IceFilm and One Channel and a bunch of other ones, and brings all those sources all together in one place. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. When you're done, you can just press the power button on the remote or on the front of the computer to turn it off, and it'll turn off in seconds. Now the setup isn't perfect. The hardware does have a few quirks. The first of which is that the cooler on there is actually pretty loud. I don't know if you could hear it really well when I had it on the tripod over there, but it is pretty noisy. Another kind of minor thing is that this motherboard either does not support Wake on LAN or there's no option to enable it on the setup screen. So anytime we want to start the computer, we do have to march up here to the machine and push the power button. Also noteworthy is the fact that Standby and Hibernate do not work. I know even when I used this machine with Windows, it had a few problems with that, but on here they just don't work at all. But other than those kind of minor complaints, this is actually an excellent application for this type of computer. Now one of the great challenges I ran into setting this up and that almost caused me to throw in the towel on the whole project was getting it to work properly with our high definition CRT rear projection television set. When I first set it up, I didn't really think I was going to have any problems with it because this card had actually been working in the Dell Optiplex computer that you saw here years ago. But it turns out that the driver that Open Elec comes with for Radeon cards does not support the component video out functionality that the card offers, even though this feature works fine in Windows. For the record, if you do try to hook it up with the component breakout cable, you'll get a standard definition picture that has a very strong blue and purplish tint to it and is very blurry and just looks really bad. From here, I knew the only way that I was going to be able to get this thing to work with this television would be to exploit a very special feature unique to Mitsubishi brand CRT rear projection television sets, and that is their inclusion of RGB inputs. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've ever seen an old CRT monitor or a CRT front projector, Oftentimes they will have some B and C ports labeled R, G, B, H, and V. And basically all those are are the same signals that are in a VGA cable. In fact, the only difference between those and a standard VGA port beside the physical form factor of the connections is the fact that VGA has some extra pins in it that allow two-way operation, that is, for the monitor to tell the computer what resolutions it supports. So in this case, I'm able to use the same VGA to RGB HV breakout cable that one might use when hooking up a computer to a standard CRT projector. The only difference is that the Mitsubishi television sets themselves have RCA or phono plugs instead of BNC connections, so I had to order a few connector adapters to actually hook those up. The other challenge here was telling the computer to only output 1080i resolution, since that's the only HD resolution that these rear projection television sets support. And I was looking all over and tearing my hair out trying to figure out how I would configure the computer to do that. The answer was that it was actually easier than I thought. What you do is you turn on the computer and you access it over the network and you go to the config files folder. And inside of the config files folder, you just create an exorg.conf file and copy the correct mode line in there for your screen. 
From there, it was just a matter of restarting the computer and hooking it up to the television set. And to my surprise, with the exception of that visual weirdness that happens before it finishes starting up, it does work 100%. Now, how do we control all this? Well, we got a couple different options. Number one, we've got our good old HP Media Center remote here. This is actually really nice. This is totally plug and play with XBMC. This is an excellent Media Center remote and it has pretty much all the commands you could possibly need for a Media Center computer. And XBMC adapts to this very well. I'd say pretty much all the functions on here work pretty much perfectly and do exactly what they're supposed to do in XBMC. Option number two may actually seem a little bit less obvious and that is this old iPhone 4 that we had laying around the house. Normally we would sell our unused iPhones but this particular one is pretty beat up and it was activation locked. We originally purchased this phone unaware of the fact that you're supposed to make sure that the Find My iPhone feature has been turned off before you reset it. Needless to say, we reset it, got to the activation screen, and got stuck, where it asks for the Apple ID and password of the previous owner, who we do not have contact with anymore. So we had to make a bit of a decision here. We could cut our losses and try to sell this beat up phone for twenty or thirty dollars on eBay or we could activate it which basically refers to the practice of deleting the setup application so that you can get to the iPhone's menu. This works well enough but because of the fact that you're bypassing the activation and the fact that the activation is where the phone receives the information necessary to know how to use the actual cellular radio inside means that it cannot be used on the Sprint network. The result of which is no service being indicated at the top of the screen. Now as you can see here because of this iPhone's unique and rather unusual purpose I've made some extensive changes to the default layout. In addition to changing the wallpapers I've also changed the positions of the icons and sort of cleaned things up a bit so the most relevant items are available front and center. We'll open up the XBMC remote itself here. I did try installing a few different XBMC remotes but I found that the official one actually works the best here. And As you can see it is already connected so we're going to do a quick demonstration of how this works in real time with television shows and movies streamed through the Genesis plugin. We'll go ahead and go to the plugins tab here. Go to the Genesis plugin. Choose television shows. And while you may not see a favorites item on here, what they have labeled favorites is actually where your favorites are hiding. So we will tap favorites to find our favorites. Choose a show here, choose a season, an episode, and after some time a list of sources for the episode will eventually appear on screen. It's basically the same as it works when you're browsing it directly on the screen, only here, instead of having to squint at the faraway screen, you just look at the phone's screen. And there we'll choose one of these sources here on the list and with any luck it might actually play although in this case it appears that was a dead source so we'll try another one well it seems like everyone's hitting their breaking point does it all become too much and what's with the impeccably clean stranger and that magical music box we have a lot to discuss plus a behind the scenes look at the bridgewalker massacre scene an interview with andrew lincoln about tonight's episode and an exclusive sneak peek at next week's episode of the walking dead i guess tonight a penguin from gotham robin lord taylor Father Gabriel, a.k.a. Seth Gilliam, and Maggie herself, Lauren Cohan. I am Chris Hardwick, and this is Talking Dead. And that's basically how it works. It's actually really smooth, really slick, and a pretty good solution. The only time when this actually breaks down browsing these plugins is when you actually 
try to search for something. So we'll go ahead and pull up the search here. You'll see that the keyboard comes up on screen instead of on the phone. So what you have to do is you go now playing, you click the gears, you click keyboard, and then that pulls up the on-screen keyboard and you can type in the name of a television show or movie. And then when you press return, the keyboard on the phone disappears. You tap the left side of the screen to go back to now playing. Then you tap search and your search results come up on the screen and everything can be executed through the phone as before. So a lot of good stuff there. This is actually an excellent purpose for this phone considering it can't be used on the Sprint network until we can track down the previous owner. So if you have an activation locked iPhone hanging around, you can check out the link in the video description for the correct way to activate one of these and you know at least use it as a glorified iPod touch. There is actually a lot of propaganda surrounding the activation of activation locked iPhones and as of right now the bottom line with those is that if you have anything other than an iPhone 4 you're totally stuck if you have an iPhone 4 you can do the delete the setup application trick and get this far but bear in mind that you will not have any service by doing this but that's better than not being able to use it at all so a lot of good stuff here. My favorite part of what really makes this setup unique is that it truly is the bare minimum for all three components in here. The computer, the television, and the broken iPhone remote. It's really amazing how well it worked considering how little each component cost. And it just goes to show you can do a lot even if you don't have a huge budget for media center equipment. That said, I hope you found today's video entertaining and informative and be sure to stay tuned to the all-new Channel 2012 for the latest in video clips, reviews, guides, food, computers, general around the house, and other high-quality, high-definition uploads. Thanks for watching.